One of these teams going to walk out as your North American Regional Champions. It's time to find out. The Grand Finals are next. Get up and get loud. It's game day. Greatness isn't given, it's earned. We all knew this matchup would happen, but only one team can sit atop of the throne of North America. Gen G, G2, let's go. And speaking of the Game of Thrones, the number of houses from North America going to the major is more limited than ever. These points up for grabs are invaluable. We'll see who comes out on top in a highly contested number one race. It looked like both of these teams have been playing on a different level compared to everybody else. And now the question is, how will they match up against each other? All right, here, going to talk to Seth, of course, earlier in the interview, said Dignitas started off kind of slow. They were able to make use of that play style. But as you guys saw earlier, Jim G has been firing on all cylinders. And then we're going to really see how G2 can handle a team that matches their pace. We'll see if Beast Mode can have the same level of success. Beast Mode uh, as well. That was a bit of an errant bounce. You could tell it's surprising Gen G. This is some power coming out from G2 early. But Beast Mode is the player you're going to keep your eye on to see if he stays downfield and is able to disrupt the Gen G defense like he's been able to everyone else so far. And right now, Jinji on defense. You start to see G2 looking forward for the press. Good pass out now. Chronic looking to take advantage of this ball. Atomic, great cut. And we have First Killer sitting in the back end. He's got to watch Daniel. Daniel trying to move that upfield, but it's going to be a back pass as Jinji try to take control of their own end. First minute of the game gone by so far. One shot recorded on Jinji, two for G2. But possession has changed left and right. Beast Mode, ooh. ooh, wanted to have a pass there. He got the infield. He got the play downfield, but unable to connect to set up G2's offense. But two go for that Atomic and Daniel both airborne. Atomic though is going to keep this attack going. Shot opportunity. It's off the bar and out. Beast mode already threatening. Threatening, yes, but that one not hitting the mark. Daniel though trying to get this one involved. Atomic almost had a free shot. Good on first killer to get there in time. Atomic solid control. These guys, speaking of first killer and Atomic, both have won seven regionals. They are tied for the most regional wins in NA, but that tie will be broken by the end of the series. I mean, you, you can really respect the, the career that both of these players have put together, but even in Safu's interview, he alluded to it at you know, first killer, as well as a lot of these players on G2 are really looking for that big achievement that title that can show that they really do have it. Obviously, Atomic is a major champion, but that's that world championship that everyone's got their eye on. And Atomic's been on that stage before, and it's looking like he's helping G2 get there again. Giving Atomic time is a bad idea. He'll make you pay for it every time. Beautiful play off the ceiling. Jin G down by one after a mistake there. G2, of course, in the lead. Gen G gonna go for a play. Daniel nicely defending that, but it's an awkward ball bouncing. They leave it for beast mode. We'll test the backboard. Huge clear out. Apparently Jack beats Daniel to the ball, and this is a little awkward for Atomic, who's taking it into an air dribble. 50 down. Beast mode there just before first killer, but first killer gets some revenge with a demo. Looking to control the ball. Gets that over Daniel. Jack is up, but beast mode. Great touch there to stop a potential equalizer. Gen G trying to keep up the pace, but G2, we know their defense uh -oh. is the best that we've seen in this event. It's going to take a little bit more than that if they want to crack. And you can see apparently Jack now moving in, sensing blood in the water after that. Oh, and that, is that it? That's in. It's in. Oh, my. G2 turned this around. There was a, 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 really a mistake in the corner. Both players from G2 getting tangled up, but they turn it around and somehow managed to extend the lead. Jack gets a bump on Daniel, puts him in the perfect spot. Daniel says thank you, and so does G2. Two goal lead here. G2. It oh. seemed like that, that was a moment, Desmond, where Gen G saw that G2 was knocked down on the mat. They went in for yeah. that knockout blow and caught a foot right to the chin. That's one of the things you have to be careful of. That counterattack game from G2. We've seen it time and time again across this event. They can sit down and settle, but of course, they get a breakout opportunity. I mean, it's really hard to stop. Here is Chronic now, though. Trying to start something here for Jinji. 
Daniel waiting and Beast Mode. Oh, a great oh, challenge oh, all the way into the net. Everybody from G2 able to get a goal this game. First killer was playing so close here. Wasn't expecting a pinch to go directly to his net. Far post, perfectly lower corner. Unreal 50 there from Beast Mode. And it seems like things are going G2's way. They it hasn't felt like a bunch of outplays from G2, but still they have this three goal lead. And it really makes you scratch your head as well, looking at the numbers from the Twitch chat. 61% thinking that Gen G was going to take this series when G2 has not lost a series yet. This one, looking at the final minute now, and Gen G are in trouble. Feels like just a little bit too far forward at times, and G2 has been able to punish effectively. Chronic, though, going to hang back, and he'll make a save out. And you see, look at that, a control from Beastmo. Picks it up off the hood, completely turns it around, has it on the hood, gets it to oh, Atomic, is... gets that win there. That's a G2 speed coming out to display. And the confidence as well, especially from Beastmo, to not rush that play. Three seconds here. Chronic looking to try to score that. He's got it! Chronic able to find the finish with the assist for first killer. I mean, Chronic was playing Big time Rocket League as well against Shopify Rebellion, multiple overtime goals. This time just does everything himself, controlling it around the corner. Giving some hope in this game, but with less than 30 seconds left, it's going to take a miracle for Gen G to get back into this. They would have to really make a late surge. Moronic, though. Whoa, a double commit there. And now Gen G having a really fight here, but like you said, he did a miracle. Not enough time here. They had to have made things work on that play. Final 10 seconds in game one. And G2 hit their mark. Everybody getting involved offensively. And Jin G are going to have to go back to the drawing board. They take not only their first loss in this game, but the first loss today. And that is a tough loss as well. We saw a couple of those plays, which certainly Gen G is going to want back. You saw apparently Jack overcommit pretty heavily trying to take advantage of that mispositioning by G2, but it led to a counterattack goal. And then you saw the 50 taken by Chronic with First Killer right behind him. First Killer thinking surely Chronic's going to win this downfield, but it 50s right into their net. So, you know, the scoreline I think is a bit deceptive because G2 really didn't break down Gen G as much as Gen G kind of had a few missteps. Yeah, exactly. I, I do feel like for me, even looking at that one, Jinji, although they had a lot of good offensive pressure, sometimes they hung around on that orange half a little bit too much, put themselves out of position, and then G2 had very open opportunities. But, of course, that's going to be the name of the game here. It's not about the macro, it's more micro. We are playing at the top here in, in A. And now, G, Gen G before we get into game two. I mean, okay, the G's in the name are gonna be throwing me off here. You're gonna have to bear with me. It's a lot of them, but aren't you? Don't you? Don't you have some relationship with Gen G or something? I don't know. Shouldn't you know how to say that? I know how to say it. It's just the G. It's, it's a and struggle. G too. Maybe I'm just gonna start saying the whole name. Then you really hate me. All right. Well, it's not. Uh, it's not just you that's struggling. Gen G also struggling out there on the field to really have any sort of synergy. You saw the confidence that from them moving in, but also I think. Uh, at times, Beast Mode is not intimidated by anyone, and for good reason. You even saw in the play where he had, had barely any boost. First Killer is threatening the 50, but Beast Mode says, come right on over. Oh, you're not coming. I'm going to take this myself and make it awkward for you. Beast Mode is playing more confident that we, than we've seen him in quite some time. Beast Mode, also a player who can take over. He's trying to take over right now. Almost able to find the read there. Here's Daniel. Has the flip reset, gets it past everybody except First Killer. He plays this back, and now Beast Mode wants to take a shot at it. First Killer quick on the challenge, but G2 still able to hold on to some offensive possession. Here's Beast Mode trying to get there quickly, but denied by Abjack. Now breakout opportunity. First Killer group. We've seen First Killer but really start to get going in a lot of games, and once he is hot, he's very tough to defend. But G2 has done a good job of holding him at bay so far. And Jack trying to pinch that out, but it doesn't surprise Daniel. Free jump again from Beast Mode. We've seen him do that quite a bit today. This time, though, Chronic is able to navigate him. However, Atomic gets that stop with a setup pass, forcing Chronic up and will use up all that boost where Daniel's able to uh, steal that corner. So this is another good attack shaping up for G2. Scoring opportunity, and what a save from Chronic! Right at the goal line, too. It looked like Atomic had that when he was going to force that in, but Chronic, like a wall in front of the net. Now still a chance, Beast Mode on the wing. 
He has Atomic in midfield. Leaves it for Atomic, but the shot's high. Daniel will try to wrap around this. Still more pressure on Gen G. They haven't been able to break out. Even that one, Beast Mode picks the pocket and slots it to the top right. I mean, Daniel has zero boost, but he stays in the play. His positioning is such a threat for Gen G. It forces, apparently, Jack to move in and panic, clear it right into the middle of the field. Beast Mode had the play read the whole time. He knew exactly what was going down, and he was there and ready to punish. Quick again, even this one off the kickoff. Look, still the chain dash just to get that one in front of the goal line and almost got the bump on Jack. Beast mode feels like a man enabled. And this could be a very big trouble for Gen G if they don't get a hold of this soon. Chronic on the ball, brings us up off the sidewall, has 70 boost. Beast mode up early. The, the confidence is clearly on display from the Beast as they still keep that one minute up or one goal lead up in the first minute or so. Gen.G, though, have not had much to point to in terms of offensive accomplishments. They have been struggling to get out. G2 has been first to so many of these touches at the midfield. First killer gonna boom this up. He has Chronic there. Chronic with the redirect, but Atomic read the play! Insane defensive read from Atomic. This game, still a one goal game. First kill trying to wrap around. He sees Daniel stretching. Takes the boost here from G2. Jack is sitting in the midfield. He has to back off. First killer trying to disrupt the G2 defense. Here's Jack. Beast mode, he does have the challenge. Chronic is up first. Chronic looking for the double. Atomic will deny. This is so close here on the goal line for G2, but still they hold on defensively. G2 will clear it out. The net was open as well if that was on target, but that was the best attack yet that we've seen from Gen G. They are very much hanging on in this game, but G2's had answers. First killer contesting that shot from Daniel Beast Mode, doing what he's been doing all day, getting those touches just past the defender who's trying to clear it out. Another great touch. Net's vulnerable. A change up, no and it's good. Apparently, Jack strikes out. And Daniel, again, you talked about him staying in the play. He has 12 boost here. He picked up a pad when he was going off the wall. And then just the off speed, Jack wasn't ready for it. G2 sent Jinji on a trip somewhere because no one was home. Things are going from bad to worse here for Jinji. They've had some good pressure here. We'll see if they can convert. That's a flip reset pass attempt, but Beast Mode always a step ahead, or so it seems so far. Atomic going for goal, easily saved there by First Killer. Ball has a lot of pace, 50 by Beast Mode. Chronic, panic clear. Beast Mode going for a bump on Jack. Daniel actually does land the bump. And Atomic going for the backboard. Beast Mode refuses to leave the Gen G half. And now it's a double commit. Everyone's out, the net's wide open, and that's gonna be an easy goal for First Killer. Gen G are right back in the game. G2, I mean, they were trying so hard to stay in the play. A double commit, I think almost a triple commit there on that side wall. They lose the 50. Gen G able to score. Now they're back in the fight with a minute 16. We could be seeing a breakdown here, but G2 have been known to be able to keep on to leads, not letting it too many goals in. It's gonna be up to Gen G to really break through and work here. A gift there from G2, a double commit. Well, it'll haunt him. If they end up losing this game, Daniel, though, jumping that lane nicely, looking for a bump on apparently Jack. Ceiling pass down to Atomic, who launches a shot, easily saved by First Killer. Atom apparently, Jack has some space to work with, flip reset, but Daniel is able to stop him. And then Beast Mode again intercepts the pass. Beast Mode intercepting so many passes, and that's got to be frustrating for Gen G to deal with. And Daniel has been trying to take boost off ball the entire way. First killer can't get a good play on this. You see Chronic only has 34. Daniel able to pick up the ball. I mean, they just are in so much control. Anytime they realize they have numbers, someone goes up field to set something up. Here's Atomic, though, staying on this play. And Jack will lose that challenge. Daniel's just sitting waiting here in midfield to be able to take this one up. It just feels like this is G2's game. Wow, and Beast Mode again intercepts it. And before this, Daniel's play at the midfield to slow down that counter was huge. Now they have one more counter Gotta attack go. to stop before it's Demo. Chronic, Demo. it's demoed. The ball was still up somehow, but now it finally touches the ground, and that is game in favor of G2 Stride, who have been handling Gen G. Gen G 
has not been able to get much of anything going, so much so that they're already calling a timeout. Gen G is going to have to go to the drawing board. Yeah, this is tough for them to deal with. I mean, you see that pressure. It is no joke. Staying in the play, even in low boost situations, and it's just the threat of everybody oh, on the G2 roster. They're just all working so well together. And I think that is the big point, is they're all working well together. And they, uh, uh, Daniel being that third man back, stopping the clears, taking the shots that come to him. And then beast mode, he's like a bull in a china shop. And unfortunately for Gen G, they're a bunch of very fragile plates at the moment. Yeah, so now it's just taking that time out. The past two games, it feels like Gen G are just not effective offensively. How do you break through a team that no matter what you throw at them, they're ready to respond? The way, Gen the way G2 has been playing, that offense is tough to manage. If you slow down, you will get stuck. We saw it so many times, even Jack getting, dropping a goal to Daniel who only has 12 boos playing off speed. You could tell they want to play a quicker game, but G2, they don't need to worry about that. They just need to outplay Jinji to the ball. And that's what they've been doing every time. I, have, I honestly haven't seen much worry uh, in, in the windshields of G2. In fact, there's been many situations, especially Daniel late in that game where he's just letting Gen G drive past him. He's he's just faking it. He's saying, come on, I'll take the 50 if you've got enough guts to challenge me. But he and you can see how fast Gen G's trying to play and it's causing problems for them. So this is where coaches really earn their paycheck. Gen G has not had much success. They're gonna have to mix something up because it has been G2 domination pretty much since the whistle. You see here, Illusion. He teamed with First Killer way back when on FaZe Clan. They ended up winning their first regional in the fall split of, I believe, 2021 season. Now coaching him as well as this rest of this Gen G roster. We'll see if there was any impact in the discussion. Game three is live. G2 up 2-0 in the series. Gen G are going to need some work if they want to turn things around as G2 have looked unstoppable so far. And speed of challenge for Beast Mode already. Really nice. Chronic's actually backwards. Forces Jack to move in, and Jack will pinch clear that all the way out to G2's corner. Daniel with the boost, and he's again so patient and is able to maintain this up and go for an air dribble clear. Beast Mode gets demoed though. Numbers advantage. First killer immediately goes to demo Atomic, but Atomic dodged it. Gets a demo on Daniel on the way out. He's going to steal some boost up field. But prime opportunity gone by for Gen G. Still plenty of time in game three, but the opening minute has been explosive to say the least. Demos left and right. Jinji trying to pass this out and Beast Mode not able to intercept that time. First killer will have some room up front, but Atomic, before he gets demo, is able to get the ball to Beast. Here's Beast Mode. He's playing this one low and Chronic will try to take it away. It seems like the pace of play has started to increase a little bit more in the midfield. Atomic contesting that ball. Again, the G2 speed to these balls up high have been so much quicker than what Gen G's been able to put together. Gen G, you're gonna have to speed it up. There's another challenge. Daniel lays off it, gets the mid boost, and goes for a 50. This could be a chance though. There's the pass intercepted again by Beast Mode. What a read for Beast Mode. I mean, his field presence, he's just been so aware of everywhere that the ball's gonna go and he knows how to make the right play. Um, that can be said for everybody on G2, but Beast Mode especially, his speed has been such a big factor in their success. Being able to read the ball, getting challenges efficiently, he set G2 up time and time again. You see Jack now trying to take the lead. The touch gets away from him. 50 on the goal line, his first killer, and not gonna be able to hit that redirect. And Daniel will try to clear this into midfield for now, but Chronic bringing it back in, and ball will bounce on the goal line. A little awkward there for Atomic, but he still wins the 50, forcing first killer away. First killer looking for a pass up to Jack. Jack will turn for it. Beast Mode lets him hit down. Beast Mode dodging the bump. Now 50 and Chronic gets off the sidewall. Low boost for Daniel. First killer will hit it and now pass it into the midfield, but nobody was ready for this Another happening? back pass and the communication is not there for Gen G. Yeah, back pass Jack. Jack had to reposition. Then they tried again and still had to reposition. 
they end up making it out of that, but it is a sign of concern halfway through this game. Still scoreless, though, on both sides. I believe Jin G has been able to stop G2's offensive pressure, only limiting them to a shot. But their offense needs work. There's play. the passing play. It's chronic. No, he oh. can't get there in time. And Beast Mode will get the credit for the save. That was an inspired passing play from Gen G, but now they have to fend off the counterattack. Daniel going for a pass, but a pre-jump from Chronic breaks it up. Atomic refuses to let First Killer have clean control. Apparently Jack with a 50. Beast Mode off the ceiling and do an Daniel air dribble. Daniel and Jack were in a roll one. Daniel ended up breaking in and peeling off. Now here's Atomic. Big pinch! And Jack and Chronic will both go in the air. They'll both play off of it. Chronic got a piece of the ball, and Beast Mode still has been able to read it. He's been back and forth on top of the ball. Oh, Beast Mode! No way! Unleash the Beast! My goodness! And oh, this has to be so painful. There's no way, apparently, Jack is going to read that play. It drops down right on his hood. And that has to be devastating for Gen G, who have had many good opportunities, had had looks, have had the pressure, and the only goal in the game being that one, that is going to be really difficult to stomach for Gen G. And they've got to shake it off quickly, though. Otherwise, they risk being on match oh, point. And that one's going to go in from Daniel. It's a two-goal lead. The wheels are really falling off for Gen G. Beast mode, getting the slightest little touch keeping first killer occupied while Daniel comes in with the haymaker to get that insurance goal. This is unreal, Daz, how quickly this game turned on its head. It did. The way JG looked offensively, it seemed like they had a chance. They were so close. There were just a couple of miscues. And then disaster struck, or if disaster has a name, beast mode did, as he ended up forcing that error. Now in the final minute, G2 Stride are moving forward here unless we see a incredible turnaround. Uh -oh. oh, no. Man. Avert your eyes. Don't look at this one. Apparently Jack had full boost, jumped right as the touch came and realized that there's no way he's getting to that ball. That is going to sting. Wow. This is, I mean, I don't even know what to say here at this point. GG have looked good in this tournament up to this point, but now it just feels like the pressure is, it feels like the pressure is getting to them. It does, and you know, the, the, it looks a little hopeless out there right now, at least for Gen G with how not only they've not been able to put much together offensively, but the way they've gotten scored on. Atomic going for a double. That's gonna be cleared off the goal line, but this game was a really tough one to witness for Gen G, Daz. And you see G2 now as the clock ticks down, just gonna play it around. They don't need to do anything else. Complete control on the side of G2. They look like a consistent, well-oiled machine as they have this series on match point. And it's been a beatdown up to this point. I mean, it, it almost reminds you of that old Rocky movie where you just see Rocky getting beat up over and over and over again. And I don't know if Rocky's going to win this time. And the, G2 has been landing some serious blows. And then not only yeah. have they been able to, to outplay Gen.G at times, but you have those moments where it feels like RNG plays a factor. And when they continue to play a factor and they continue to not go your way, that is, that is a really difficult thing to overcome. It is, it is, especially at this stage. I think everybody going into this matchup really expected fireworks here. And it just feels like you're getting that from G2. On the other side with Gen G, it just feels like they are really struggling to figure this all out. Now they're in the toughest spot you could be in a best of seven against a team like G2, down 0-3. Only option is to reverse sweep. You've already used your timeout. Man, the desk, yeah. The desk really couldn't have got this one more wrong. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we laugh, but the reality is the game's not over yet. We saw even in the Swiss stage, a few teams reverse sweeping, but those were best of five. To do it in a best of seven is going to be really difficult, especially with a G2 who has not dropped a series in this qualifier. 
Backs against the wall. No room for error. Jin G are going to have to leave it all out there game by game. G2, at this point, they just have to keep things going. I mean, the, the way they've looked, there's not much they need to change. I think it's, it's certainly just keep doing what you're doing for G2. It's been working. Already first 30 seconds have gone by. First killer. Got a little bump on Atomic, but Beast Mode went up as well. He was totally ready to take control of that ball, expecting the bump out of first killer. Atomic leaves this one. You see Daniel coming in. Atomic will take the back boost. Daniel just playing the low 50s. Atomic a little late to this one, so it pops out. First killer trying to play the 50 mid. And Jin G, the rest of the team, has to kind of reposition. The ball has not really been in a much of a predictable state for them, so it's been tough for them to position offensively. But here's Jack. Has beast mode. He was already on the wall waiting for Jack to bring the ball up there. And that has to be annoying. Every time you're trying to get some space, every time you think that the defense is going to respect the space. No, Beast Mode says, I'm here to take possession. There are no questions. I'm just doing it. That's something that Sathu said in the interview, that space is such a big thing. He wants the people that the G2 are playing against to not have space. And that's what it feels like as we get, oh. again, another counterattack play here from G2. And they just keep ramping up. And I think you might need to send, apparently, Jack, some roses, maybe some some candy to, to recover from how devastating this day has been to come so close to breaking up that play and not being able to do it. Yeah. Gen G, they, they're sinking. It, and it, yeah, it doesn't look good even on the side of Jack. I mean, we've seen that same position from him twice now. And you can tell that the team wants to play so much more forward, but then the ball gets past somebody, and you see what happens. G G2, no strangers to this. They've been doing this to teams the entire oh, event. Save. They have been. Maybe that save from Chronic as well will help the comeback. Only two goals scored up to this point for Gen G. Gibbs said that it's you know, wait, hold on. Oh. Daniel with another goal. And you know, I might as well say it. Gibbs said that it was the top two and then everybody else. And well, I'm starting to believe there's G2 and everybody else. It certainly looks that way, James Bott. I mean, that 50 from Atomic, he brushes past two, gets the double on that. And then Daniel, great follow up. They are, they just look unstoppable. First they killer though, he'll get one. A oh, first killer. This could be the moment where they stop the bleeding and start to heal. And also a great play from apparently Jack. You yeah. saw the wall dash into the bump. There's no way that ball's getting through unless apparently Jack makes that play. Yep, great individual work there on the sidewall, pushing it forward and good positioning from no first way. killer. Beast mode, throw oh, first oh. killer. Denies it at the goal line. Like oh, he's up and said, over. Jin G not out of it yet. Daniel oh. though, goal line save. Halfway through this game four, Genji show life as they fight to stay in this grand final. And apparently Jack was able to snag that corner boost right before that clear out. This is another good attack. That shot gonna be wide from Chronic. Apparently Jack trying to turn and contest. Now First Killer loses that challenge to Daniel. The G2 speed getting the better of Genji there. Daniel now leaving this for Atomic. Atomic, high pass across the goal. Nobody makes contact. I think. Jack a bit surprised, as well as Atomic. Now ball high up, Atomic uncontested. Will go for a goal, and that's a save by Chronic. Daniel going back towards the net, but couldn't get around it enough. Pass over to Jack. Jack will take it. All the ball goes for the demo, and it's still saved. Atomic, he dodges bumps, he dodges demos, and he just makes the play. And Daniel, well, big musty. He was trying to score that. Beastmo trying to wrap around a chance here. First killer, no, he can't make contact. Beast Mode gets bumped. Chronic with the shot. Atomic, another block out. And G2 Stride will start to move forward. Atomic Ooh. almost able to finish this one. But Gen G still holding on. Oh, Must you can see Chronic. Down. He was surprised. He knew that apparently Jack was low on boost. But Jack used the Musty to get more distance. And that actually threw Chronic off, who was playing close. And now a 50 on the goal line. This is G2. Domination, they will not be stopped. <laughs> Chronic can't make the touch. Jack a little too late. Daniel with the finish. Even.
even when you see signs of life from Gen G, it just only just motivates G2 to turn things up to another level. Look oh, at the pacing yeah. <laughs> there from Beast Mode. He's just all over it. Who is going to beat him in the air? I hope everyone can still remain friends after this series. Beast Mode, some of the stuff he has pulled off would make me a little bitter. First killer, a little slow. Here's Chronic. Trying to control this one. 50 towards the midfield. Daniel gets the flick, and Jack trying to keep this one from his own end. Atomic, though, puts a shot on. First killer denies. Chronic trying to get this downfield quickly. Atomic takes out Jack in the back end, and first killer has to go all the way back downfield. Only le it's less than 30 seconds. Down by two. Uh -oh. As G2 oh, are no looking way. to sweep beast mode, almost was able to submit it for sure. Final few seconds in regulation. One last play here for Gen G, and Atomic cuts it out. <laughs> and my goodness, total domination. Number one, there are no questions now. It's G2 stride. G2 win it all here in North America, and they are the undisputed number one team in the region. If you have a question, just no. There, this was so dominant when we we're expecting it to be close. Everybody was saying it's G2 and Gen G, even the pros. We asked them to submit their power rankings. G2 and Gen G tied at number one. Tied at number one. Well, Dazrin, I don't think we're tied anymore. Not at all. Not at all. G2 with that victory, as dominant as it was, four game sweep on Genji in the grand finals. There is no denying how well that team played. And my goodness, it just, when you see a team that looks as strong as they do, you really wonder who can take them down. And I guess I'll just jump the gun a little bit. I know we're not the analysts right now, guys. Mm. But they, they, you know, does NA have a chance now? Or can we, can we play EU? <laughs> can we beat them? Does it have a chance? Or will EU continue to dominate? Well, after seeing what G2 brought out today, if you're a fan of North America, that has to give you some hope. Yeah, it does. It, it really it really does. I mean, so efficient. The pressure is great. They give teams no space. They also are very effective on and off ball. Uh, even Daniel, some plays that most people wouldn't even think to go for, he does go for it, and it pays off big time. I mean, I don't see, I, we haven't seen a weakness in them yet, James. Well, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that because we have seen them push to their limits against Luminosity. And that's why I think many people in the chat mm. had given Gen G the edge. But when it came down to game time to win it all, G2 rose above. And man, they answered every question we have. But wait, maybe we'll get a few more questions. Let's throw it over to the desk and find out. The undisputed kings of North America are G2 Stride. If you have any dispute, no, you don't. You don't get no, no, no. We will not receive any comments right now. It is clearly G2. And uh, I don't know. So here's, here's my question, though, Gibbs. Is this yeah, uh -huh. G2 uh -huh. just being that much better than Gen G in your mind? Or was this a Gen G collapse? Because it was a little, uh, I felt like maybe a little bit of both. I feel like it was a little fluky and we should run it back. No, G, it's like <laughs> G2. Like, it was definitely both. Like, we saw G2, they were so incredibly fast. Not only were they fast, they were predictive. They knew where the ball was going at all times, all three members, especially Beast Mode. And then Atomic with some great saves as well. But, but apparently, Jack, he looked lost on the field half the time. There were some own goals happening. There was a ton of mistakes for all of them. And it is definitely a mixture of both, but you have to credit G2. It's because of the pressure they were putting on. It's because they were reading literally everything that Gen G was on the back foot at all times. And mistakes will happen even to the very best team stacks. G2, the target is clearly on their back now. They are number one in North America. Yeah, let me give you a demonstration of that series. I got Gen G. I got G2. <laughs> that's it. Wow. That's okay. That, I mean, that's I mean, what it was. We did say we were talking about it during the G two match against Dignitas. Like that, the reason it was so one sided was Daniel was was many things, but it was primarily G 2s speed. They were just so yep. much faster. It felt like they were outpacing Gen G through this entire match as well. Stacks. 
Yeah, it was it was great to see Beast Mode and Daniel playing to their full potential as well. I feel like we actually hadn't seen it yet. We'd seen a lot, especially in the Swiss, where they were running into each other. And I was just like, wait a minute. This is like NRG in London in the finals all over again. Every single time down the pitch, they stayed out of each other's way. They were that was that was peak G2. Now it maybe. I mean, you don't want to say they've peaked in the first event of sure. the season because you want something left over for the lands. But boy, that's as good as we've ever seen them. And that's what we talked about with G2. When these three came to a squad together, we were like, so if they peak. They can beat literally everyone uh, in the world, but can they do it consistently? Well, one tournament down, they definitely have. They went perfect through this tournament. Sure, there were some yeah. some uphill battles on day one, maybe a couple game fives that maybe they shouldn't have been in, but they figured it out relatively quickly, and they look like one of the best in the world. So we'll see if they can do it again. It is very difficult to win back-to-back -to -back tournaments in Rocket League. Only Vitality, obviously, that perfect split it, but into a perfect major. It doesn't happen often. Every single team is going to be gunning for them, but for now, yes, they look above everyone else. It is very difficult to go undefeated in a regional event like this, but they pull it off here. 3-0 in Swiss, 3-0 in the bracket. They drop one, no, two games in the bracket here. And we'll see if they can bounce back and do it again. It's not even a bounce back at that point. If they can continue on with this head of steam they've got uh, in the yeah. next event. But still, there, there's 